All right, so we're talking about urban baseball then, right? Right. All right, so I guess one thing is talk a little bit about your like personal experience though coming through urban baseball. I guess when you started at Jones. Well, when I started at Ignatius, that's a that's that's a form of urban baseball. It's mm-hmm. like it's parochial, but it's not public league and uh, public school. And you know, there's there's money there, and um, we didn't have a field when I first started at Ignatius. We had to go to Washington Park or McKinley Park, and we had to fight softball teams, and and nobody worked on the field, and we had to bring our own rakes, and that's the that's really what's the problem with public school baseball. Chicago Public League Baseball in particular. We both coach for public league schools and we share the same field and we have the same problems. Mm-hmm. And um, There's a lack of resources in general. Yes, no money. Um, we have to fundraise for everything. We have to beg people to help. And they have to realize that you know we're working for such little money and we're, we're doing this because we love the game and we love to try to help kids uh, understand our love of baseball and, um, you know, make them better baseball players, make them love the game like we love the game. And it's really hard to transmit that when um, you're dealing with bad feels, bad umps, bad coaches. You know, everything melds together, you know. When we deal with umpires sometimes that literally don't understand the game of baseball. They're just there for the... They're unqualified, the like you've said We've talked about this uh, on the side that they're not registered, they're not certified, and nobody wants to work for sixty dollars a game, uh, forty-five dollars for freshmen, fifty dollars. This is public school fees, and I don't know where it is around the country, but you know, it's not a lot. But you, you shouldn't be doing it just for you know money. Mm-hmm. But a lot of umpires do, and. You know, they don't get paid right on site. They get real testy. They stop showing up. Like today, we have one guy show up at game time. That's unprofessional, but that's what we're dealing with. We're dealing with unprofessional people. You know, I've seen terrible coaches on the other side are teaching kids all the wrong things, starting with, you know, organizing and discipline. And, you know, they, they let kids swear. They let kids do whatever they want. And, you know, it's it's an embarrassment, really. I mean, it's embarrassing to our profession. And I know how, you know, since you played for me, you know, I know how dedicated you are, you've been since you've been, since I've known you, since you were 13 or 14 years old. And I know it kind of hurts you to see other players, other programs. And now you're in a program that's destitute, basically. Mm-hmm. And it you just, know, uh, it's you know, your, head, your head coach, which is your brother, tries to get as many more, he tries to hit on people for money and tries to get people to work on the field. And, you know, it's like, um, and, and our fields, quite frankly, it's one of the best in the city and it's mm-hmm. not all that great. Yeah. And it's still just at a park district. I mean, yeah, today we're, we're fighting teams in right field and softball and left. I mean, I was uh, out there in center. <laughs> you were out there in center. I mean, because there's so little space in the city, you know? Yep. So our question is how do we, make urban baseball better there i mean there's from the standpoint of the resources the space and then even so some of the kids i mean at at jones it's a different story where you have every kid playing pretty much is playing because they're extremely interested in the sport whereas at my school um i'm not even sure some of the kids are interested or even give a damn sometimes yeah for those of you guys don't know this when you you, if you're going to listen to our podcast Jones College Prep is a city is a school in downtown Chicago, South Loop, and it's like a selective enrollment school. And um, kids are pretty. Uh, it's academics and athletics. Um, we've actually Joe was Joe was a 2012 graduate, and he was there um, at the pinnacle of Jones baseball where these guys did it for the love of the game. And we had very little numbers. We only had 725 kids. Now we have 1,800. And it's a really high profile school. On the other hand, Joe is now coaching after playing four years of Beloit, where he was an outstanding player and he helped win a conference championship his last his senior year. Um, he's coaching at Juarez. Juarez High School. It's not a selective enrollment program. It's a neighborhood school. Mm-hmm. Community and, high school and. All the Pilsen area. Right, which is a up-and-coming area, but it's still poor in a lot of areas. And 
to get kids to come out to his program, it's like, it's like pulling teeth. Some kids got to work. Some kids don't show up. You know, some kids have never played before. Then you have a, some, you, then you have some good athletes, but you have to have one common goal. And that's where Joe and his, his older brother, Len, who's the head coach, it's, it's going to take two or three years to get that philosophy through the, through them. And sometimes it gets so, so frustrating. A lot of coaches leave programs like that. So that's the difference between our program where when I came in there, there was no money at all. And it was, baseball was an afterthought. And we had two of my ex-players are traders and they're rich guys. <laughs> um, they, they redid the field. They put up a $15,000 hitting cage. That's what we need. And kids gravitated there all the time. How many, how many parents support more than their kid? How many parents that say, hey, I know it's good to for the program when my kid is benched? Or somebody else is, you know, or somebody else is just better than him and is playing more than him. Or I mean, very few, right? Very or some few. some kid, some kids pulled out of the game because he's given up five runs, and said, "Why'd you pull my kid? Are you watching the game?" Yep. Very few parents. Are. I mean, in all the years I've coached, this is my thirty-first year. I've had the parents that support the whole program, maybe on one hand. Mm -hmm. That's pretty sad. I got one this year. He's the. Their parents are the best out of the out of these six seniors. All the, the all the other five are just um, not good. So um, it's it's really a problem. And you know, is that a problem with urban baseball? Um, so it related to your experience. Then, if like if you had to name the number, the top three things that are the problem with coaching in urban baseball, where, where would you go with it? Uh, lack of funds, lack of equipment, lack of facilities. Okay. Yeah, lack, of, lack of support. Um, what, what, that's, that's, that's all inclusive right there. I mean, just la total lack of support and um, really deficient in teachers and coaches. I mean, teaching and coaching the wrong way. I mean, there should be like, that's what we do here at DNA Sports. Uh, we try to coach coaches the right way so they can teach players the right way to play. So, I mean, I think it's really important to train coaches the right way to play. And there is a right way to play. There's a right, there's many right, there's many ways to teach the right way, but we need more of it. I think that's the number one thing from my, from my experience, just because I'm at a different setting than you. Right. Um, the teaching aspect. I think the culture at this high school carries over to the culture of the team because they're treating it as if it's the same as in their high school, whereas at least at Jones, it's probably a little more organized and disciplined yeah. than it is at Juarez, where they're probably mostly pushing the kids through the system. Right. I mean, um, one of our ex-teammates, friend of yours, friend of mine, uh, Eric Acevedo, he came to the game today with his son, and he says, why aren't you yelling anymore? Well, it's a different scenario. It's a different, just different kids, and mm -hmm. they fold up like a tent if I yell. And I think you would want to said, don't listen to the tone. Listen to the message. Mm -hmm. And they don't. They listen to the tone. And you know, a lot of you know, a lot of kids are soft. They may, they, they, they might be inherently soft, and they might be been made soft by their parents or the environment, whatever. But they're soft. And that's why you see, you know, looking at the big leagues, I mean, unless you've got these high-profile American kids like uh, Chris Bryant and, and uh, Bryce Harper, um, most, of, most of your great players are from not from this country. I mean, really, I mean. Mm -hmm. A lot of them come from the dirt. <laughs> they come from the dirt. And they, they, don't, they, they, don't, they don't have travel teams at the Dominican Republic or Venezuela. They play. And they play. They organize themselves. That's the way I was grew up. Hey, you want to play wiffle ball? Hey, you want to play fast pitching? Hey, you want to play baseball in the street? Hey, you want to organize a rubber ball game? Yes. Aside from Little League, it was all baseball. It was great. And you play, you played with instinct because you played it so much. Yeah. And now, where's that going? Basketball? You know, there's one, there's one sect of basketball players, and then there's another sect that they're bad. I mean... I mean, there's no development going on there either. I mean, you have all the schoolyard guys, and you know, and all the all the ghetto guys, and 
you know, you know they're all African American. Then you have the white kids that supposedly have all these lessons and they're all getting developed, and they're not. They're poorly coached. That's why you see in the NBA, most the Caucasian players are European. You get very few American white players that are all stars. Gordon Hayward from the Jazz. Okay, what did that happen to them? They got swept in four by the Cavaliers. He's he's a, he's a, he's a really good player, but he's not a great player. But there's you know there's there's no development going on. The right development. All they do is they send him to camps. You know they send him to shootouts. And there's no there's how do we how do we make the most of our ability? Well, obviously they haven't. So I mean there's we're lacking in this country teaching and coaching excellence. I think it starts too with the culture that's created. That I mean, for me at least, uh, when you think about high school, what are the juniors and seniors worried about? Uh, where am I going to play mm-hmm. at the next level? Mm-hmm. Versus the here and now, and worrying about your current team. You oh, but okay, um, you never did that. And it's not that I don't agree. I mean, of course, it's important to think about where you're going to go next. But yeah, but you you played, and then you worried about. I, Where you were going, you could you could you can uh, com- compartmentalize what you did. You said, okay, I got a game today, but now when I go home, then I'm going to figure out what what fits me as far as an athlete and as far as a student goes. Yeah, whereas now, right now it's rolling over into each other. I mean, at the end of the game, I feel like some kids are thinking of you know what they did in the game and relative to how they're going to get recruited by a school. Mm-hmm. Oh well, at least I went three for three. Well, guess what? You lost by ten runs. You know, yeah. you know what I mean? Do you and, have college players at Juarez? Um, I mean, potential if, ones. No, yes. if you if you were a college recruiter and said, I can recommend this guy to a Division One program, Division Two program, Division Three, NAIA, JUCO. Do you have pro guys like that? It doesn't matter. Yes. Yeah, okay. Yeah. You could say, I hey, say I have one, maybe two. Because your reputation is based on recommending guys to colleges, because these college coaches have it easy. Mm-hmm. Okay, they coach baseball. And they have camps where they pay their assistants. It's an easy job, but they have to be right on recruits. Mm-hmm. So you have how many? One, maybe two. Okay, I have. I have four seniors out of six that are going to play, and the fifth is going to go off for the team. And the the, the sixth guy is going to run track. I think that's a fast kid. Mm-hmm. And honestly, none of them are going to succeed. Why do you say so? Because they're going to see the real world of. Of sport, they're not going to be protected by mommy and daddy, and you know, hey, you, whatever you do is right, and everybody else is wrong, and that's another problem. You know, everybody else is wrong. It's not a team attitude, and these guys are going to fail. Well, the four guys that are going to college, they all got me first attitudes. Me first always fails. Mm-hmm. Now the junior class is all team guys, and so they're going to succeed wherever they go. There's three or four of them that are really good. And sophomores too. The best player on our team is a sophomore, and he's a gutty. He's like, he's like the guys I like. That he's not afraid of anything. He goes after guys. He's our leadoff guy. He's really thinly built, but he's going to be a great player. Yeah, I say maybe one kid just because he really, he really tries to get after it all the time. He's the most. Pitcher. Uh, no, he's our left fielder. He's a lefty. He tries to pitch. But I saw. Him. I no, saw him. he's he's so intense right. that I think he almost thinks too much on the mound. Okay. Yeah. But his intensity though is great for playing left field and being a leadoff hitter because he's locked. And so there. what's his what's his level? Um, he would probably play like D three or like community college or something. And then build into, let's say he goes. You recommend him to community college or junior college and say he has a chance to play. One year, I mean, experience in junior college, and he gets a chance to play D three or D two. Mm-hmm. That's some. That's the way to go. I mean, your your kid, though he comes from a lower league than ours, is probably going to be more successful than our four guys. Mm-hmm. And, and that's the thing, exactly what we're talking about. How culture is more important because it really doesn't matter where you're coming from if you have the tools. No, it if, doesn't. If you're going to you're, get recognized, you're 100% right. Recognized. You can find players anywhere. And so when it comes to a successful program, that's why I think culture is huge. And when we go to urban versus anywhere else, the culture is just completely dead because you have kids that don't care or it's the opposite where they care about themselves only. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Um, that's, I don't know. I think 
in terms of the game, if you look at the game and you if you saw a kid the way he played, you would say there's a problem with the culture on that team. I look at situational hitting because yes, if, if like if there's a runner on second or third with less than two outs and he doesn't get over or get in, I look at situational hitting right there. Yeah, and then the other the other um, thing that you look at there is bunting. Mm-hmm. Kids, say it's situational. It's just, right, that's situa- That's part of situational. This one kid, he's a six four and a sixty, and he never gets a bunt down. And my assistant coach says, "Why doesn't he get bunts down?" I said, "There's one reason. He doesn't want to bunt. Mm-hmm. He wants to hit. So he 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 pretends that he sticks the bat out there. He doesn't, he doesn't want it to get down. Again, that's selfish play. Okay, because if he just gets it down the third baseline, he's going to beat it out every single time." And he doesn't want to bunt, so he fouls it off, and then he strikes out. Yep. And then he's just so the other the other kid, the other kid. There's another kid who uh, I benched today because he's just you know he's just got a lot of issues, uh, mental mental issues. And he's another great bunter, but when he wants a hit, he doesn't bunt. He doesn't get it. It's about him. It's everything's about them. Okay, they don't think about team, and that's really another. Very few teams. There's there's very few teams in urban baseball. When you have a when you, when you do have a team though, you find that you win. That's You're it. Winning team. That's it. So the last time that the public league has won a state championship, they won two years in a row, 1972, 1973, and it's Shures Hubbard, Hubbard Shures. Those are the last two teams on. So that's a that's a condemnation of our product. Okay, and all these spectacularly uh, talented teams by the media, I mean, they think that some of these teams are really good. They're not really that good because when they face teams out of the city, suburbs, central Illinois, they get beat. They get their butts beat because they're just not that good. They're not that good at baseball. They're good at being athletes. But you, there's when you can pitch to them and keep them off the base and when you have a catcher that's really good, you when negate you their baseball. speed. When you play baseball, you, play you beat baseball. them. And that's 45 years since they've won, 44 years since they've won anything. And I don't see it getting any better, so it's a real dilemma. So I guess, what do you think right now, like, where, where do we go with, with urban baseball? I we mean, need, we need, and this is like hoping that some billionaire is a fan of baseball and sees CGS product <laughs> probably <laughs> and uh, wants to donate money a center going year around that will help kids understand learn and love baseball I, that, that's the only thing I get it almost has to be like a training school for baseball and also training school for coaches and umpires because we're we're missing all of the most importantly players. I mean, there's just all the good players are fawned over. Very few of them. They're all fawned over by all the same people. They want them. They want them. They want them for college. But and then they want them for high school. You can see all the kids in eighth grade. You know which kids are good. It's, it's, they all want them and they all want to do illegal things to um, get them in their school. So like that's why the Catholic schools in, in this city. They're so like, hey, we'll, we'll give you free tuition, blah, blah, blah. And I know, you know football's big. Well, we'll give you football, baseball, your free tuition. We'll, we'll give your mother a job or you know, get, let your brother in for free you know, or your friend in for free, whatever. So so why have you been coaching baseball so long? How many years now? 31. And spill it. Yeah. Why I want to coach? I like... Uh, Developing players. I love the relationships between the players. I mean, you're not going to win championships, but you They remember all these things they continue to come out to our games. They continue to call so we've done something right the relationships between yourself and players that's you know, it's very humbling and gratifying mm-hmm. and, So uh, I said just looking at you and what you're doing now and uh, what a hustler you are and um you know, how much you want to be a great 
coach, you want to be successful in business, you want to just be good at everything. It's it's really heartening to see. Mm -hmm. And I would say, obviously, my first year coaching here, but the reason I played my whole life was because I loved playing, right? I didn't know anything better. Or, and you would get why. upset. And you, you never understood how people couldn't see this. You're all... And so I, uh, but now looking back though, when now that it's all over after my final year, I know why I played so much because of the the reward that I got from all the hard work or what it felt like to yeah, win. Yeah, when you weren't playing in college, you were really mm -hmm. angry, and you 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 were saying, "Why doesn't the coach see what I can bring to the team?" And but he, I never he, understood. He, he finally did. I don't know. But man. I think he finally did when I finally understood my role. That's that's uh, and that's what we talk about. The game that's communi take, communication. Right? And yeah. so when I realized how much I matured just because of the game of baseball and the hard work that I put in and the lessons I've learned and the people that I've met and the places I've gone just because of baseball, that's Beloit is like I'm so grateful to go there, but I might not have went there if I wasn't looking to play baseball. Right. And For so sure. For that's sure. one of the reasons that I want to coach to give kids the opportunity to have that feeling of hard work, that feeling of reward, especially kids at Juarez where they don't get those in, a, in any other areas of their life. That's a tremendous undertaking that you're you're going through. And I mean, these kids need that. And that's, see, that's what we need in the city. But how many people, we have to find more than us. And I'm retiring, you know, my I can see my, I can see the end. <laughs> and so, like, you have to, you know, carry the torch. Yeah. I mean, and... I have good assistants on, on my staff, and they're young, and they're not, one of them's pretty selfless, the other, are, they have their own gratification. They don't have the same goals that I did. I mean, they like wins. I want to see a program and get, develop relationships. I want wins, and, wins and to be the by, byproduct. Yes, yes. Byproduct of, of a healthy team, a yes, col good culture. Yes, our wins. Yep. John Wooden, you know. The long-time coach of UCLA said the byproduct of playing correctly, I mean, are wins. I mean, you don't have to, you just, when you do things the right way, the results will come naturally. And he's right. I said, you know, we set up things, you know, um, to make sure that uh, we didn't get beat defensively. And we always stress pitching because we weren't going to hit a lot. We didn't get the... You know the the top notch athlete, but it's still fun. Yeah. So I guess we just got to push the product that is coaching. Yeah, push the product. <laughs> That's you're right. Yeah, I, find yeah. more coaches. Find yeah. more coaches who know coaching. We've been talking Teach for coaching. We've been talking for forty five minutes to an hour and yeah, push the product coaching. That's yep. really that's really it. It's all yeah. about coaching. Coaching have, coaches. Coaching players. That's it. And we we need to find. We need to get the word out to everybody and maybe we can develop, we can have a center of our own without having to ask a billionaire for money. Yeah. All right. Well, I think that's it for today on yes. Urban Baseball. It was a great, a great conversation and we'll see you guys next week. Yep. Sounds good.